He really has become a, a friend and a mentor to me. Dean Keller was almost like a, a, both like a father figure and a friend at the same time. He is probably one of the best mentors that I, I've ever had. John Keller is the, uh, the genuine article. Uh, first of all, he's a great teacher and totally devoted to students and the student experience. Secondly, he's a strong scholar. And thirdly, he actually cares about making things better. And so I knew that he would not be the sort of a leader who would take a job like that for the, for the ego aspect of it. He did it because he wanted to make a difference. From all these many years later, I think that he's shown himself to be one of the great leaders in the history of a great, great university. You know, one of the things that um, Vice President Scorton warned me of when I came over here, he said, you know, you're, at, at some point, you know, you, you really enjoy working with students in your lab. You know, you develop great relationships with them. He goes, you're going to have to change your focus now to think about how you're impacting students writ large at the university. Because that, that's going to be a challenge for you. And I found that to be true. After a few years then of, of that, and there was, I, I felt a gap, even though I really enjoyed my graduate college time. So I decided that the graduate college needed to become much more um, interactive and involved in the work of the Graduate Student Senate. So that one-on-one -on -one relationship with students um, that you know, I had in the lab that I was able to transfer now to a, more of a, an administrative academic mentorship. When I called him the first time in 2000, I, the, the poor man had been the dean for all of 15 minutes, I think. I think the provost had called to say he'd been appointed, so I called John about 10 minutes later to congratulate him and then said, oh, by the way, would you host this conference for us? And he agreed. I mean, he laughed and said, I think you're, I think you're pulling a fast one on me, but I want to showcase this campus. And it was a spectacular success. I think there were, in fact, 650 students. And John's enthusiasm lent that kind of enthusiasm to the other deans. John saw it as an opportunity to showcase this campus and to showcase what graduate education could do to transform lives. I would always feel so much at home in the graduate college. It made me feel valued and it gave me a, a really good purpose aside from uh, just being a graduate student trying to uh, finish my dissertation. I learned a lot about leadership uh, and I learned a lot about you know, professionalism from Dean Keller and I'll always be grateful for him. With uh, me and my two friends uh, from the Graduate Student Senate, uh, we were here so much that he actually was threatening us that he would call Orkin so that he gets rid of the pests. <laughs> It's that, that honor and privilege of helping um, mentor and guide undergraduate and professional students onto their careers has been probably the most rewarding part of my career, which I, I will remember with great memories. In the summer of 2008, I was experiencing its second major flood and John Keller had to make the very difficult decision to terminate the Summer Research Opportunity Program mid-session. The day of their departure, John went to the uh, dormitory, and one of the students was very anxious about arranging her ground transportation once she arrived, particularly paying for it. And Dean Keller reached into his pocket and withdrew a $100 bill and handed the banknote to the astonished student. It was an incident that I learned about, very few people knew. I feel like it was just one of many examples of John's spirit of generosity. It was an emotional um, departure for many of the students from the U of I campus. And that very day that we arranged their departure, Interstate Highway 380 closed right after those students were transported to the Eastern Iowa Airport. That's how close we cut it. He's always had a very personal connection with you know all the different folks that work in the grad college. One example for me is we're both Cubs fans and in uh, 2016 the Cubs won the World Series and they were in the postseason and there was one day it was an important postseason game and John put the game up in the conference room on the, the large TV 
and we both brought our work into the conference room and just sat there doing our work but with the, the game on in the background. It was just so lovely to just enjoy those human moments with him and I'll, I'll always remember that part. My oldest daughter is, you know, in junior high now. She's looking forward to going to college. And a lot of that, I think, is from, you know, the interactions with Dean Keller. Is he's talking to them about what's going on with them in school. By taking an interest in our lives, supporting us in every way possible, it makes us want to work harder for him. And in my personal case, you know, it makes me want to write great stories about grad students to tell their stories. Dean Keller is present at every executive uh, senate meeting, every GSS General Assembly. From my own personal perspective as the chair of the Jacobson Conference, we had to move from an in-person conference to a virtual conference, which was a, a major undertaking. The, the biggest thing is when we were talking about the financials, he always assured me, um, don't worry about it, just put on the best conference and provide value to the students. That was the number one goal. You know, we were at Hawkeye Caucus Day and here I am talking about all this research that wasn't necessarily music therapy, but informs music therapy. And I was having to talk with a lot of um, government officials about what it is that I do. And they always ask, you know, well, what is music therapy? Why should we support that? It was a long day. And so on the ride back in the van, um, Dean Keller made some smart Alec comment about what music therapy was not, and he knew it wasn't that. And my filter was down and I just like, I snapped back at him like, I don't even remember what I said, but he started laughing and like, we just, I mean, he just rolled with it and his sense of humor was fantastic. I mean, he's a real person and a really kind human being. So it's, it was a highlight of my time at Iowa, honestly, just that, that van ride. These qualities, I think, yes, they did, did manifest themselves in his leadership, but I think even more prominently in his um, interactions daily with students, faculty, and staff, he was spontaneous and he was himself. There were times when he would come out of his office with the Groucho glasses and attachments, the, um, the novelty disguise. He kept it real and, um, and fun. He really did. Well, I have a memory that's not such a fun memory that, that sort of just gets me angry just thinking about it. We decided to, um, to go on a, on a weight loss regimen together. Um, we, we decided to support each other by leaving snacks that the other one could not resist on his desk when you know he wasn't around he ended up putting stuff on my desk that i couldn't resist so um rather than have some big terrific success we actually gained weight on our weight loss <laughs> regimen thanks thanks to each other but the flip side of that is that um john made working um in a sometimes very stressful environment just just sheer joy, no matter what was going on. I reflect back on my own development as a student and an early faculty member. I, I've been blessed by having great mentors all along through my career. David Scorton still is a mentor to me, and I hope that I've been able to transfer that back to uh, students and, and colleagues that I've been able to work with, that I've been served as a good guide for them as they move through their careers. And it's been a privilege to serve in the, as graduate college dean for. 20, over 20 years. It's been such a, such a, just a wonderful, wonderful thing for me to be reconnected to the University of Iowa in such a, such a direct way. And, and it was because of John. For a guy who's so unassuming and so humble and, and modest, you know, as I was traveling across the country, participating in graduate education events, everybody knows John Keller. I mean, wherever I would go, he's had a huge mark on graduate education in this country, not just at the University of Iowa, it must be said. It's kind of remarkable that this is all, that I've been able to participate in all this. I never would have thought this would happen. So I'm, I'm quite touched, quite touched. 
From the book, I think it was Good to Great, they identified the sort of servant leader, the humble leader, as the one that can transform an institution and carry its development over many years. And John definitely has been one of those people. Yeah, he was a trusted partner, sometimes in crime, but very often using his superpowers to do good. John follows in the, in the footsteps of other excellent graduate college deans who preceded him, but he's even taken it, in my view, to another level mm. with a student-centric approach and focusing on the, on the basic tenets that make excellent graduate education what it is. That's John Keller all over the place.